We've come. We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh, yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We've come. We've come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding, Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome. From the time that you entered into the house of God bless you once again, Apostle Dr. Schaefer, the pastor of Interceding Christian Parents, headquarters in West Memphis, Arkansas, 414 Thompson Avenue. To God Almighty be the glory. Happy Memorial Day to each and every one of you. Amen. We get ready to celebrate the time period set aside for those who have given all for their country. The great country that we're in. Amen. Beloved, let me first encourage you. Listen, the grace of God is sufficient. His grace will keep you. His grace will allow you to make it through anything that the enemy tries to throw at you. I pray that you allow God's grace to be sufficient in your life. Amen. Recent Lord's cup inside my spirit, dropped inside my spirit, a sermon that came from Luke chapter 9, with a focus verse being verse 23. In verse 23, the Lord Jesus tells them, after the great confession of Peter, he told them, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, let's go into the sanctuary here with, thus said the Lord, in a sermon that's entitled, No Cross, No Crown. Book of St. Luke, chapter 9, beginning at verse 18. Book of St. Luke, chapter 9. St. Luke, chapter 9. Amen. St. Luke, chapter 9, beginning at verse 18, says this, And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist, but some Elias. And others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said to them, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answering him said, the Christ, Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, if any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the time spent in your word. We ask you would touch, that you would move, that you would heal, that you would deliver by your power, oh God. Hallelujah. The word that you have placed in my heart, that hearts will be touched, oh God. We thank you in advance for what you've already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me minister to you on this morning. Amen. I was inspired by verse 23 of Luke. Chapter 9, First Lady. So on this morning, as the inspiration comes forth, I minister to you a warning, but yet I minister to you also at the same time a call to arms. A call to arms. Jesus himself often spoke in terms of analogies. He would use analogies and he would build up those analogies, taking what he knew that people knew, common things, and he would use that to point them in the direction he wanted them to go. He would use words that, that terms such as seed and harvest, things that people understood. He would use terms such as vine and fruit, these analogies, church and bride, terms such as light and darkness, hallelujah. And though the Lord Jesus did not use this particular phrase, in essence, if you read verse 23 again, I believe that you would get some kinship to what it is that I'm saying. Verse 23 said, he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take his cross and follow me. So I minister to you this morning something that the Lord dropped inside of my spirit that's entitled, no cross, no crown. Amen. No cross. No crown. Mm -hmm. 
Tell your neighbor, no cross, no crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No cross, no crown. Hallelujah. Now, it is fitting to us to, 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 to include the verses that contain the confession, the great confession of Peter, also known as Simon or Petros, uh, who, who was given the name Petros. It is fitting for us to include his confession. And the proclamation of who he said that Jesus was. Jesus was not just some ordinary man. He was not just some prophet. He was just not some kind of good guy. He was the Christ. He was the consolation of Israel that they had been waiting for centuries for. He was the Christ. Hallelujah. The confession of Peter, of the disciple Peter, was a bold statement. It was an empowering statement, hallelujah. It was a statement that, that to those in the natural, such as Down Thomas, Thomas probably said, I doubt it. You know, those in the natural, such as Judas, who said that maybe I should have said that, I would have said it better. I am more in tune with my vocabulary than old Peter. He's just a fisherman, hallelujah. Whereas the spirit of John the Revelator, perhaps his, his spirit, who, who, who was known to give the revelation of God, he could understand. Those in the spirit do understand the things of the spirit. It's hard to present things of the spirit to those who are not in the spirit. You don't believe me? Try to cast your pearls before swine, and the swine will turn and they will trample on you. So I can get where some people didn't understand. But this confession of Peter opens the door to the earthly purpose of Jesus the Christ. While the crowd, they wrestle with this. They was like, what? They wrestled within themselves. They said, this is uh, this is the rising up of John the Baptist again. This is the, the rise of Elijah, Elias. This is the one of the other prophets that have come up, been risen up by God. Hallelujah. They wrestled within themselves who this prophet was. Being amazed and claiming the great works that Jesus had done. He had done things no one else had ever done. No one ever conceived the things that Jesus had done, the feeding, the healings, the deliverance. No one had conceived these things, hallelujah. But as they as they went along and, and the, the, the man, Apostle Peter, Petra, Simon said that this is the Christ, they began to understand the greater purpose of Jesus. That he had come not, hallelujah, not in the sense of an earthly king, but he came as a heavenly king. He came to live and he came to die as a heavenly king, hallelujah, so that we would have opportunity to have a life new, a new and abundantly, so we would have opportunity for the reconciliation of ourselves unto God Almighty, hallelujah. He came with a, with a purpose of servitude, hallelujah, and that servitude of life that he had would ultimately lead him to the cross. Oh my God, my God. It's not amazing that people of that day didn't recognize Jesus as they were not as learned as we are today, huh? They, in similar nature, may have seen Jesus as a religious figure. Oh, some people still call him just a religious figure. He's just a good man. Oh, not acknowledging that he's king of kings and lord of lords. Not acknowledging that he's the great I am. Not acknowledging that he is uh, who he was and is and is to come. Not acknowledging that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They did not realize who he was. Hallelujah. But in the same vein, the confession that we have made ourselves, Jesus as Lord. And I'm saying this literally because I, I'm expecting that everyone listening to me has made that decision to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. Hallelujah. In the same vein, the confession we made, which being disciples that are cast forward by our confessions uh -huh. decision, we are called to carry our own cross. Our own cross. No cross, no crown. Right. We're called to carry forth our own cross. Our own cross may be the weight of things we brought upon ourselves uh -huh. or the weight of being called of Christ. Uh -huh. The call of Christ relates more to what we do, what one must do in order to bring others to Christ. There's a sacrifice that you must make in order to bring others to Christ. And a lot are not willing to make that sacrifice, my yeah. God, my God. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it cries me. It causes me to cry when I think of the souls that we have missed. 
those that we have missed. So sometimes our own cross may include the weight of things we brought upon ourselves, the others the call of Christ, mm -hmm. the suffering we must go through in order to bring others to Christ, in order to bring Christ into focus, into focus. I just want to break this thing down in two things, two things when it comes to bearing our cross. I'm going to break this down into two places, and, uh, to two things that places crosses on us, rather. That places crosses upon us. Two okay. things. The first and the heaviest of cross is the cross of self. And I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about the cross of self. You know what the cross of self is. You did it. You are guilty of it. I'm not talking about the sin nature that we all carry because of the seed of Adam coming through us. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the sins, not even the sins of your father and mother. I'm talking about the sins that we commit, things that we commit, and we have a self-imposed cross upon us. We bear pain ourselves because of things that we have done. Oh my God, if I could take back some of the decisions I made, hallelujah, along the way, it would help me out in so many ways, or so I think, hallelujah. But many times, hallelujah, the first cross and the heaviest cross that we bear is the self-imposed cross of self. See, the choice that you make today will determine the crosses that you bear tomorrow. Hallelujah. The choices you make today will do what? Determine the crosses that you bear tomorrow. Oh. Hallelujah. The other cross is the one that really I want to talk about this in the second cross. The first one is the cross of self. The second cross is the cross of being saved. Mm -hmm. We all have a cross that we must bear. Right. And being saved is a cross that sometimes really, really causes you to feel some kind of way. Hallelujah. This is a cross which begins and can begin sometimes when you are saved. It can begin when you're saved or it can begin before you are saved. Hallelujah. Case in point. Hallelujah. That being said, when you are not saved, but you're set aside for a greater purpose, I want to share. When you set aside for a greater purpose, there are certain things that you just can't do no matter how unsaved you are. There are certain roads you cannot walk down no matter how unsaved you are. You may walk near that, but you just can't walk down and you can't walk into that place because you have been set aside for a greater purpose. Hallelujah. I grew up most of my formative years in Orange Mound in Memphis, Tennessee, one of the roughest places in the world, one of those places where the crack demon just took his time and destroyed Though I was in the mound, the mound was not necessarily in me. It was not in me. Let me explain. Let me explain. I tried to fit in. I tried to do all the big and bad things that I could possibly do. Right. But you ever been the type, and I'm the type where as I'm saying, and people just automatically know I'm a church boy. I can be walking around with the red color of the bloods with the blue color of the grip. I can be walking around with a joint in my mouth. I can be walking around with pants sagging down to my ankle, my knee. But someone would come up to me and say, you don't belong here. This is not you. This is not you. You don't belong here. Hallelujah. I did everything I could to fit in, Sister Glory. I tried to fit in, but I really just didn't fit in. I was always at odds with the things that went on around me. People were hardcore thugs would literally come up to me and they would tell me, you don't belong here. I would be in the club party thinking I got the best party going on in the world. But people would come up to me and say, what are you doing here? Hallelujah. In the midst of doing some terrible and criminal, they would stop me and say, hey, what are you doing? That's not something that you're supposed to be doing. Even though they were doing the same thing, they would say, you don't belong here. Hallelujah. And they would encourage me to get out. I'm sure they didn't know that they were being used to God just as God uses other inanimate objects or objects that don't seem like they have no use. The same as God used the crow. The same as God used the mule. The same as God can use any and everything in order to get his point across. Hallelujah. They did not know that God was using them to help change the course, the direction that I was going to go in. As much as I wanted to fit in, the cross I bore would not let let me 
would not let me fit in. Hallelujah. Oh, I tried to go for things that I thought were risk crackers, but the Lord would not allow that risk crackers to come to pass. Now as I sit back in hindsight and I look at what I thought were risk crackers, I realize I was just looking at saltines. I realized I was looking at not just saltine, but the cost cutter saltine. Not something with a brand name such as Nabisco in the corner. Not something with a brand name, but something that said cost cutter. Oh my God, my God. I tried to fit in, hallelujah, but I could not fit in because I was set aside. Oh, and many of you know what I'm talking about. You tried your best to fit in with the things of the world. You tried your best to be the fly boy, the fly girl. You tried your best, hallelujah, to be that hot roar, that chop caller, that, that, that ball, high ball, or whatever they call You tried your best, but God said no. You don't fit in here. And God sent people your way in your direction to help to pull you out of. Hallelujah. You in the midst of a war, but God said have peace. You in the midst of trial, but God said you're not going to go to this. Oh, you in the midst of but God said I don't want you to be in this. I'm pulling you out of this. Amen. Hallelujah. No cross. No crown. Not fitting in was a cross placed on me to bear for a greater purpose. For years throughout my life in the streets, in the army, people would do the same thing. They would tell me I wouldn't fit in with the group. I didn't fit in with the group. I wanted to be like them. But I was under the shelter of the wings of God. Hallelujah. When you're under the shelter of the wings of God, there's an aura about you. There's a persona about you. We talked about the powers on last week. There's an aura, a persona about you that repels certain things from you. Hallelujah. There's an aura, a persona about you that propels or repels even death itself. I did some things that should have caused me to lose my life. Hallelujah. But God Almighty protect. I did some things that other people just could not get away with and not be in some major serious trouble but God protected me hallelujah because of the call upon my life because of the cross that he intended for me to bear someone had to make it out someone had to be able to tell the story someone had to survive the story would not be told unless someone made it out of that oh my God and I see the same thing in your lives hallelujah glory unto God someone had to survive in your family someone had to be the one that broke the curse upon your family someone had to be the one that said the book stops here someone had to say that God almighty has called me out of Jordan and to his mother's life someone had had to be ready to say so somebody had to survive oh don't be ashamed of carrying your cross carry your cross boldly carry your cross with indignation carry your cross hallelujah with the consideration of the pain and agony that jesus the christ went to while he carried his cross oh my god my god the cross bearing is so applicable in all areas of your life in all areas of one's life See how you bear your cross, or if you bear your cross, mm -hmm. there are blessings tied to it. There are blessings tied to bearing your cross. Yeah. There are blessings tied to bearing your cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are blessings. Come on, somebody. Blessings. Hallelujah. See, see, as a Christian, you're under constant surveillance. The enemy is constantly looking at you. He's constantly whispering so-and-so's ear right at that moment in time when you're getting ready to do something that you know that you should not do. He constantly whispering somebody, look at him. You're constantly under surveillance. And it's not, it's not something that you want to be paranoid about. It's not something that you want to, to panic about. Hallelujah. It's all good. Some people get nervous and upset when a boss looks over their shoulder. But I could care less because guess what? When he finds me doing something, I'm going to be doing the right thing anyway. I'm going to be doing the right thing anyway. Hallelujah. See, you are the tool which the Lord uses. The tool that the Lord uses is your faithfulness. So the other will see you and not glorify you, but they will glorify God. So the things that you go through and you were able to go through those things with grace, you were able to go through those things not hating, not despising. You were able to go through those things, hallelujah, in spite of how wrong you were done, but you were still able to pray for the one who manipulated you, who used you, who mistreated you. You were able to still pray for that person, hallelujah. Oh, the world sees. 
season and the world begins to look at you and by transference they're looking at you but they're seeing that Jesus operating on the inside of you keeping you from doing the things that the world would want you to do oh my god my god but you can negate yourself as a tool by opening your mouth at the wrong time. By saying the wrong thing. Yep. By having the wrong attitude. You can negate now. yourself as a tool by joining in the yeah. crowd. Beginning to complain with others. Oh, you can negate yourself as a tool. You have to learn to be like Jesus. Not a mumbling word did he say right. while he was on his way to his pain. Yeah. Not a mumbling word did he say when the garden incident happened. They took him in the garden. He didn't complain. No. He knew what was going on. He did not say a mumbling word as he was dragged from one kangaroo court to the other between Pontius Pilate, hallelujah, and King Herod Agrippa. He did not complain, hallelujah, when they began to beat him on his back, hallelujah, and by his stripes we, hallelujah, are healed, hallelujah. He did not begin to complain when they whipped him and mistreated him and spit him. He did not begin to complain. The first word that Jesus said when he got to the cross and they nailed him to the cross, it wasn't even out. It was, yeah. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. Hallelujah. You know, there's a popular song that goes out that says, if you can use anything, Lord, use me. You can use anything, Lord. Use me. And it goes on a list. Use my hand. Use my feet. Use my heart. Oh, it goes on using that. But how about using your back? How about using your legs? How about using the strength of your body? Hallelujah. In order to propel this gospel. There's a cross that has to be born. And Christians, we are dropping the cross. Oh, my God. In secular terms, they'll say you're dropping the ball when you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But in spiritual terms, we're dropping the cross. We're dropping the cross. Why? Because we have too many Christians who complain. Too many Christians who complain. Too many Christians who spend their time complaining are not profitable to the body of Christ. If you spend your time complaining about your boss, then you can't reach your fellow worker for the cause of Christ because all he knows is you someone that he can go to to complain instead of someone you can he can go to in order to be prayed for, someone he can go to in order to be encouraged, someone that he can go to, hallelujah, and understand to understand the workings of God Almighty. Oh, my God, my God. Complaining Christians are a detriment to the Great Commission. You can't carry out the Great Commission complaining all the time. Hallelujah. You cannot carry. The harvest is still going to remain plentiful. And you won't be a worker for the kingdom if you're all you're doing is complaining as a Christian. Hallelujah. Oh, there's, there's a big problem in the body of Christ. We got too many cursing and complaining Christians. Who bring something in there? They they bring a cuss word in there and like, well, that's something that Jesus said. Uh, they'll say hell, and what they hell they mean by hell. They're not really talking about the hell that Jesus talked about. They're talking about hell in their emotions. They're talking about how they're feeling. Uh, in other words, they're slipping a curse word in there. Hallelujah! Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are a few. He was saying, I'm not calling for complaining laborers. It's hard to be a laborer and complain at the same time. But keeping in mind the blessings which come from working for the Lord. There's blessings that come from working for the Lord. Consider what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. For our affliction, the pain we go through, which is but for a moment, just briefly, working for us a far more exceeding, greater, and external weight of glory. Hallelujah. Then further in Romans 8 and 18 says, I imagine the suffering of this present world not to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in you. In you is glory. There's glory in you. It's way deep down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. But many of us haven't even scratched the surface of the glory that's on the inside of each and every one of us. We've got to realize, hallelujah, that the glory is in us. But in order for the glory to come to the surface, hallelujah, we have to bear the cross. Can I give you some clarity? I imagine that the cross you bear is not worthy compared to the crown which shall be given. No cross, no crown. We want to complain about our crosses, but Bartholomew, Philip, and Peter didn't even consider themselves worthy to be crucified right side up like Jesus, where they were crucified upside down. Hallelujah. The crown or the reward is so easily accepted. 
but the work. Many of us want, we want the crown. Oh, give me my crown. Give me my adoration. Give me my uh, uh, adoration. Give me, give me those things. We want the crown. We want to sport the crown. But we don't want to bear the cross that it takes to get the crown. Hallelujah. We want to walk in off the street after filling out an application and immediately become the CEO of the corporation. But you don't know the years the CEO spent preparing to be the CEO of that corporation. We've got to learn to bear the cross in order to get the crown that God will give us. God is not going to just throw a crown at us. He's given us enough of a crown with the grace that he gave us to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. He's given us enough grace in that area of a crown. Hallelujah. But in order to get the bigger crown, the more bejeweled crown, the crowns with bigger jewels, the crowns with more gold. Hallelujah. You have to learn to bear first your cross. Hallelujah. The crown and reward is so easily accepted by people, but they won't accept the work. The molding of the crown is significant work that separates those that are barely have barely made it in from those who work going after their father's business. The crown distinguishes those who took the great commission of heart and those who just took a seat. Those who wanted a Hugo versus those who wanted a Mercedes. Let me give you some scriptural base so you know that there's a distinction between, made between those who scraped by and those who with all diligence ran the race. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 25. Know ye that they which run in a race run all, but one received the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible crown. But we an incorruptible crown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone, everyone who runs the race, hallelujah, will be a winner in God's kingdom. If you run the race, you'll be a winner as long as you endure to the end. You endure to the end. You can come in very last, hallelujah. You come in very last, but if you endure to the end, hallelujah, hallelujah. God can use you if you run the race. He can use you to teach. He can use you to shepherd others. And teacher doesn't mean necessarily someone who has this DHD or THD. Or, uh, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean necessarily that. It means the everyday things that you do are influential toward others. People see how you are carrying yourself and you're bearing the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God shows you extreme importance, shows you the extreme importance that he's placing on those who teach and preach the word. We've got to be willing to teach and educate others how we live our lives oh, after they are saved. Uh, uh, one of the greatest things you can do is to help someone make it a little further in the right. kingdom. Hallelujah. That's one of the greatest things you can do on this side of heaven, to pour out into someone. Hallelujah. Amen. What you have experienced, the love, your hope, your peace, your joy, to pour out to them, hallelujah. I'm told sometimes, believe it or not, Sister Gloria, I'm told sometimes I minister at a high level than most people understand. Some people say, I can't follow what you're talking about, preacher, because they get so used to the way that they are used to hearing things, and they don't want to hear things the way that they need to hear things. When you get so used and comfortable with the way that you hear things, you end up missing things that you need to hear, things that you need to see. Hallelujah. I've been told by them, but some of them will come, many of them, most of them come back, and they told me later, my God, I never really saw it that way, but I see now. I see now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But see, see, the thing is, Sister Glory, most people think I come by this naturally. They think, oh, my God, you don't even know. You don't know the countless hours I spent before the Lord, the countless hours, the countless time, the amount of time I spent studying and diving into his word. You don't know the number, the amount of times I spent in libraries before they even had the internet and stuff like that. You don't know the time that I spent, hallelujah, bearing this cross that was on me, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want your crown, you have got to bear your cross. You want your crown, you've got to bear your cross. Amen. Jesus, after being beaten all night, still had to drag his cross. He still had to bear his cross. But while dragging his cross, get this, while dragging his cross, 
a man named Simon of Cyrene, a Libyan of the time, a man of Simon, not Simon of Cyrene, began to help him carry it. Simon, who sat on the side of the road watching Jesus passing by, saw Jesus carrying a load in which Jesus was tripped, car car he tripped and fell several times while carrying this road. And then the men, the Roman soldiers, the temple guards forced him, forced Simon of Cyrene, forced him into labor, forced him into labor, hallelujah. Now notice Jesus didn't force him into labor. Jesus didn't force him to carry a cross. Men did. And the same as men will make our burden of the cross unbearable. They'll make our carrying of the cross unbearable, but they'll make us carry the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't force him, and Jesus won't force you to carry his cross. He won't force you to carry his cross, hallelujah. He will not force you, but no, he will not stop you from carrying his cross because he knows that it is profitable for us to carry the cross. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Listen, it takes time. It takes time to get into a relationship with God that you need in order to carry that cross. It takes putting in the word. It takes putting in the studying. It takes carrying the cross of, of picking up, up something besides your Jet magazine, your Abney, your Essence magazine. It takes more than that. Holly. It takes time. It takes time. You know, people have got to learn to get off the book and get on their face. Get off of social media. Get off of Instagram and get into the prayer closet. Get into the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. You've got to learn to turn on BET, MTV, uh, soap operas, reality shows, uh, and set yourself aside. Consecrate yourself. You've got to learn to spend time in prayer, time in fasting. Hallelujah. Oh, and meditating on the word. Wait, live to say no pain, no gain. Same thing. No cross, no crown. Hallelujah. No cross, no crown. See, once you get that knowledge, you got to apply that knowledge of the word in your life and the lives of others that you encounter on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And when you get that, what was broken can be fixed. When you get that, what was in disrepair can be repaired. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. Don't you realize that before the glory came to cross? Uh, hallelujah. Jesus was born in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothing. He was not born in any one luxurious hospital with attending physicians, uh, with midwives, with nurses at his beck and call, with, with, with uh, wet nurses at his beck. He was not born there where people came bringing him a bottle or, or put a scepter in his hand. Hallelujah. He had to first go through the glory to get to the glory. Hallelujah. He had to go through the glory to get to the cross to get to the glory. Uh, and because he went through the glory to get to the glory, hallelujah, he received a name high above each and every name, hallelujah. Because he went to the glory to get to the story, hallelujah, he became able to intercede on our behalf, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Before forgiveness came to cross, before forgiveness came to cross, hallelujah, before interceding on our behalf, it came, came to cross. Hallelujah. Before the name above each and every name came the cross. The cross. The cross was something that cost a lot. Hallelujah. And as much as the cross did cost, it does not compare to the crown that you shall receive if you serve him. Hallelujah. You shall not compare to the crown that you receive by serving him. And here's the amazing thing. Hallelujah. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Hallelujah. See that cross of those who put it up on themselves is heavy. It's extremely heavy. Hallelujah. But the cross of Christ, when you first start off, you may think it's going to be heavy. But when you come into realization, you run this scripture, you begin to get an understanding of that scripture where he says, take my yoke. <laughs> Hallelujah upon you. Hallelujah. You'll realize that though it may seem heavy in the terms of the world, it's not a heavy cross to bear. Considering the crown that you're going to get. It's not heavy at all considering the crown that you're going to get. Your cross does not have to be as heavy as it is. I know some of you are feeling as if the weight you bear is too much and life is not fair. As I told you, you must bear some weight. Some weight. 
but not the weight that the world has. The, the weight that you have, God will lessen that weight. Hallelujah. He said to himself, take up on my yoke and I will take on yours. So if you put on the yoke of God, you can place the yoke of the world on him. He can handle it. He can carry it. He has huge shoulders. He's able to handle what it is that is on you and causing you to stumble and fall. Hallelujah. Oh, and never will he put more on you than you can bear. Hallelujah. He's speaking to someone today saying, don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. He's speaking to someone today saying, don't throw it in. I know you're about to give up. Right. Hallelujah. He's saying that I've seen you drown in the pool and you've already put down two fingers. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You already put up two fingers. Mm -hmm. He's saying that. Mm -hmm. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. He said, though, I'm going to bear that weight for you. He's speaking to someone, don't give up, don't give in. I'm going to bear that weight for you. Hold on tight to my unchanging hand. He said, I'm encouraging you, don't give it in. Don't give it in because prayer works. Hallelujah. There's a God who will help you to bear your cross. Hallelujah. The same God told the apostle Paul. Hallelujah. When Paul began to complain about his dilemma, began to complain about his pain, began to complain about his circumstance, his situation, the Lord told him, he said, that my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. What? Your grace your grace is sufficient, my God. Stand on your feet, y'all. I'm wrapping it up. Hallelujah. 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 Glory unfolded. Hallelujah. Something that they said always sticks in my craw. I just can't can't get get this out of my craw. They they said that well, even if he doesn't do it, doesn't mean he can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even if he doesn't do it, doesn't mean he can. Hallelujah. Oh, it, it blesses me because I think of it like this. Look, 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 look. In order to show that he was God of all, hallelujah, he could have easily just made the fire not burn. Could have just killed everybody around that was trying to throw him into the fire. He killed some. He could have easily done that. But instead, to show how much he had authority over it all, he got into the fire. <laughs> He got into the fire with him. He went into the fire with him. Oh, bullshit. He went into the fire with him. Hallelujah. To show him, and my God, they came out, didn't even smell like smoke. Didn't even smell like smoke. And to let you know how hot the fire was, those who threw him in died from heat exhaustion. Hallelujah. But they got in, and they walked around, they smiled. Hallelujah. And and I'm sure they prayed and prophesied, I'm sure, amen, because the king came up and said, I, didn't we throw three folk in here? Oh, my God, I see a fourth one, and the fourth one looks like the son of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So he'll bear the cross of the fire that you have to go through on a daily basis. All you have to do is let him bear the cross, hallelujah. Now he will help you to make it through. He'll make help you to make it in, hallelujah. The thing is, is that you do have to bear that cross or you will not get your crown. Hallelujah. So there are our five crosses, and I'm going to minister next week on the crosses. Hallelujah. The crowns, rather. There are five crowns. The five crowns are the in incorruptible crown. Number two, the crown of joy. The third one, the crown of life. The fourth one, the crown of righteousness. And number five, the crown of glory. Hallelujah. You want the crown? It's looking good. You can picture it in your mind. Oh, I want that crown. I want that. I want everyone in heaven to know how many souls I added to the kingdom. I want everyone in heaven to know how much God, God appreciates what I did. Hallelujah. I want, I want everyone in heaven to, to know this. But as Billy Graham said, he had a dream. And he was in heaven receiving his reward. And while in heaven receiving his award, there was a little old lady who was behind him. He thought he recognized her, but didn't, wasn't sure, but he kept looking at her. I seemed to know this woman. 
I see Menorah, he get up there and he see two big crowns. Then he sees a smaller crown. Hallelujah. The person in front of him got the big crown. He's like, oh, well, surely this next crown is mine. I'm going to get this next crown because this is huge. He get up there and they place the small crown upon his head. And he turned and he looked. Who is this crown for? And it was the little old lady who received the crown, the huge crown, the crown that needed support. Wait, the angels had to help her walk off with the crown. Hallelujah. And as he saw her with that crown, he began to question, why did she get a crown? Whereas he had revivals with, and where hundreds of thousands, where literally millions of people got saved. He had revival. Many got introduced to Christ through his revival over his 40-year ministries. Many had learned of the Lord Jesus Christ because of the cross that he had borne. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, this is the glory of he said, yes, you did some great work for me. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. You've done some great work. But he says, you were able to do that work only because she prayed for you. Because she interceded for you. Because she stood in the gap for you. Because she went into spiritual warfare for you when you were getting ready to fall by the wayside. This is the only reason that you were able to bring all these souls to. Hallelujah. It lets us know. Hallelujah. There's a crown stored up for you. In heaven. Hallelujah. There's a crown stored up for you. Of grace. There's a crown stored up for you of his glory. There's a crown stored up for you in that place. Lift your hands right there, oh Jesus. Lift your hands right there, Father, your oh Right there, hallelujah, Father, we thank you. We bless you, we glorify you and honor you, oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, we ask for forgiveness of sins and transgressions, anything that has caused our crown, oh God, not to be rewarded to us, oh God. And Father, we bear the weight. We bear the weight that you placed upon us, oh God. We bear the cross. As Christ said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself. We have to deny ourselves. Hallelujah. Deny the pain that it's going to take to carry that cross. Deny the agony. Deny, hallelujah. Deny ourselves the liberty of setting down when we want to sit down. Deny ourselves the liberty of giving up when we want to give up. Hallelujah. We have to deny the flesh. Hallelujah. And carry that cross. Hallelujah. Because when you carry that cross, Jesus is lifted up. And when Jesus is lifted up, you know when something is lifted up in a high place, you're able to see it from miles around. You see it from miles around when something is lifted up in a high place. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God. I want this to get inside your spirit. Said, no cross. No crown. No crown. Don't go looking for your crown if you haven't borne your cross. Don't look for your crown if you haven't worn your cross. Father, we bless you and glorify you for this day. We ask, Lord God, you would touch it, you would heal and deliver it. Lord God, you would provide what is needed for your people on this day. Your words has given me, give us our daily bread, and we accept our daily bread. But not just the daily bread, but Father God, we walk in the land, oh God, hallelujah, of good and plenty. Oh, God, the word told us, God, that when you see the righteous forsaken, nor his seed bed for bread, we walk in plenty. Hallelujah. We bear our cross. We bear our cross before man, oh, God, that you would be glorified. We will not retaliate. We do not take actions in our own hands. But we allow, oh, God, for what to happen to happen so that people will be able to see that only Jesus could have done only Jesus, the strength of Christ, could cause us to be not hateful. Cause us not to, God, turn on them, but instead turn the other cheek. And we bless you and glorify in advance. 
in Jesus' name. Somebody said, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you, love. Amen. Thank you for listening in on today. And this. the Lord has always done for me. Well, the Lord has done for me over the last few weeks. I had I had no choice but to do this. Hallelujah. Then you may be seated. Amen. The rapture is going to occur soon. I'm just going to tell you that the rapture is going to occur soon. Yes. Hallelujah. And I don't know why the Lord did it, but to God be in glory. Why he told me this. He, he said, begin to talk about what has happened after the rapture has occurred. What can happen. And the most important can that can happen is you can get saved. You can be delivered and set free. There's some things that will occur that may, that uh, you you don't want to be around when they do occur. You may even lose your natural life as a result of not denying Christ Jesus. When they try to force you to take the mark of the beast, you may lose your natural life. But beloved, trust me, when you close your eyes on this side, in this ball of confusion that this world has become after the rapture occurs, you open your eyes immediately to the streets of gold. You open your eyes immediately to hear the angelic choir. You open your eyes immediately to see the loved ones who were saved who went on before you, hallelujah, welcoming you into the kingdom. You open your eyes immediately where it's the, there's no sun required, <laughs> hallelujah, to a place where no sun is required. Guess why? Because the glory of God shines around and about, and the city is lit up, and all the matches are lit up. You don't have to worry about MLG and W cutting you off or whoever cutting you off because the power of God lights the place up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. So if you're listening in on this and the rapture has occurred, you can accept Jesus as your Lord and be saved. Hallelujah. God bless you. Beloved, if you are so blessed by the ministry of interceding Christian Center, amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord has pressed upon your heart to be a giver to us, to be a blessing to us. You can bless us by going to our cash app, which is dollar sign interceding CC. Dollar sign interceding C. Or the other way, we have Givelify as well. You can go to the Apple or the Android store and download one of those apps onto your device. Amen. And you can go and look for the beautiful picture of my wife, First Lady Tina Schaefer. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Tina, you'll be able to be a blessing to this ministry. I want to thank you for those who are blessing. My God. It's, it's mind-blowing how people are blessing the ministry. Amen. People have never set a foot in the ministry, hallelujah. Even some who went on to other things and moved away, hallelujah, are still blessing the ministry, my God, hallelujah. And I thank God for you, amen. You are phenomenal. May the Lord God Almighty continue to bless you and keep you is our prayer. Make sure that you tune in to our Bible study series that's called what, First Lady? Oh, you got to say it loud. They can hear you over there. Faith under fire. Faith under fire. Amen. I believe we're up to part four right now. Amen. Faith under fire. Powerful. Hallelujah. Word that is needed at this time coming from first and second Peter. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. Continue to press forward. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you enjoyed the word today. And that it touches you within a deep place in your heart. And it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.